Hello, another workout today. So, a little bit different format. It's going to be one round of kickboxing with one round of a bodyweight core exercise, okay? Still 20 rounds, but just alternating. We're going to mix it up a little bit today. First one, jab, cross, left kick. So, straight left, straight right, come up and flick out that left kick. If you can, when you throw the cross, try to step and cross at the same time, so you're already in position to come in for the kick. If you're finding that a little bit too difficult, it's going to be jab, cross, step in, and then throw the left kick. So don't worry about the power on this first round. Think about nice full extensions, getting everything warmed up. When we throw that cross, we want to turn that hip over, turn that shoulder over, engage our lat, get everything nice and loose. Jab, cross, left kick. Jab, cross, left kick. If you want to move around a little bit when you do this, totally okay. Jab, cross, left kick. Jab, cross, left kick. You got it. Jab, cross, left kick. Get everything nice and loose. Don't worry about the height on that left leg. Just go as far as your flexibility allows. Get everything nice and loose. Fantastic. First exercise, squats, guys. Feet are going to be just outside or lined up with our shoulders so that we have room for our hips to drop into. And it's just going to be into a nice deep squat and back up. Go as low as you can. So if you can get nice and deep, get nice and deep. If you have to go a little bit shorter, go a little bit shorter. Big thing is you want to watch your posture. So making sure we're not doing this. So don't try to go extra low and drop down into this position. Keep your body at most on a 45 degree angle as you come forward. Focus on keeping your chest high, shoulders back. Easiest way to do that is just think about pulling your shoulders elevating your chest as you drop down. Really think about that nice, tall, straight posture. Good. If you can go extra deep and keep that posture, go extra deep. But it's all based on your level. You find if you get too narrow with your stance, you won't be able to go very low or keep that straight posture. So we want the hips open so that our body has a little kind of position to drop into, right? Good. This will start getting that heart rate up. Get the legs nice and up. Awesome. Next one, we're going to work on that right kick. It's going to be cross, left hook, right kick. So really extend out, rotate through as you throw that cross, rotate in on that left side as we throw the left hook, and then come back and flick out that right kick. We're still not going to be totally warm yet, so don't worry about the height on the kick. Just go as far as your flexibility allows. Cross left hook, right kick. Really think nice rotation when we throw that hook. This will actually help load up. So as I turn this foot back out and open up, that gets me in position for this kick, okay? So then each punch or kick sets up the next one in the series. This rotates me in for a hook, which rotates me in for a kick. So each one should set up that next one. Don't worry about the power of speed yet, unless you're feeling good and you want to, then fantastic, go for it. But otherwise cross, left hook, right kick, really focusing on our technique, get everything nice and warm, nice and loose. Good. Cross, left hook, right kick. Cross, left hook, right kick. Good job. Cross, left hook, right kick. All right, let's get that upper body nice and warmed up. Next one's gonna be push-ups. So think thumbs almost to armpits, that's the position we want to be in. Elbows are going to be on a 45 degree angle, so not way up here, not way down here. You can do it on your knees or your toes. I'm on my fist just because I have a bad wrist, but you're more than welcome to do just regular with your hands on the ground. And you're going to drop into that push up, drive it back up, drop in, back up. Big thing on this one, hips, chest, head, all in a straight line as you come down. Really think about keeping a full, straight posture. Big things that I see a lot of times is hips hitting the floor first. We want to avoid that. Or just dropping in and kind of head comes down and the hips stay up. And if you're doing this from your toes, same idea. Hips, chest, head, all come down together in a nice straight line. And really try to focus on your depth. So I'd rather have you do it from your knees and go chest to the floor so that we can really get through a full range of motion in the chest as opposed to being on your toes and just kind of keeping it short, okay? So even if you were up here, you only do one. You need to drop down into a few. Shake it out, come back up to another full one. Let's start to build that up, okay? Next one. 
Next one is going to be jab, cross to the body, left hook, cross up high. Big thing when we throw that body cross is just like this position here, I want it to be the same thing, but just lower, okay? So think about the technique. I don't want to see you leaning over and kind of punching down. Straight out with our left. I actually want you to step in a little bit. Straight out with that cross. Left hook up high, cross up high. Think about our footing here. I'm in on the jab, follow through. As I throw my left hook, I'm actually gonna bring this right foot in a little bit. So I'm in position to turn back for my cross. So nice and slow, it's that jab, I'm stepping in. Cross, left hook, my right foot slides in. And then I'm in position for that last cross. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Jab, cross, hook, cross. And remember, when we're throwing that cross, full extension out, full extension back. Thumb is gonna be on that downward 45. We really wanna turn all the way over through that hand. Same idea on our jab. Full jab, full cross, full jump, full cross. Awesome, guys. Next one is gonna be leg raises with a hip lift. So flat on our back, support the hips with your hand. You're gonna come up, drag the hips, Control back down to the floor. If that one's a little bit too challenging, you should do it with a bent knee. Do it with a bent knee. I want you to just isolate the abs on this one, okay? So drop it up, extend up. Drop it up, drop it down. Up, drop it down. And remember, if you're doing that little hip pop, when you come up, you want to come a little bit slower on the way down. So don't just throw up and fall. You want to throw up, control down. Drive it up. Control down. You'll only be able to do it for a second or two, but just a little extra slowing of tension to give you a much better workout in your core. Again, if we're doing that modification, it's just gonna be with the back knee, okay? But focus on isolating where we actually wanna feel this in the core. Good. Abs stay tight. Abs stay tight, you got it. Good. Keep driving. Keep driving. And if you're doing that other one, with that hip hop, that's great. <laughs> All right, next one, guys. We're actually gonna start with a slip. So I want you to slip off to your left side. That's gonna load us for a left hook. Come back with a cross, in for a left kick, okay? So slip, left hook, cross, left kick. And you should be able to do this one a little bit faster now. So slip, hook, cross, kick. In position, slip, hook, cross, kick. Really think about this, loads this, so we wanna come back nice and fast. That slip, I'm getting out of the way out of the punch. There's now an opening on my opponent, so I'm moving, I wanna capitalize right away, finish on that capitalization, and then bring it down low, because their hands are gonna come up from my punches, right? So I'm slipping, landing my two, finishing with that kick in the opening. Slipping, landing with my two, finishing with my kick. Really make sure on your slip, hand stays up nice and high. In case you don't get all the way out of the way, you want that little extra protection there, okay? So slip, hook, cross, kick. Slip, hook, cross, kick. Nice. Slip, hook, cross, kick. Good job. Make sure we really turn all the way over on our hook. Rotate all the way back to our cross. And finish our kick. Always finish. If you're halfway through, make sure you finish the combination. Forward, backward lunges. Same leg, forward, backward, switch legs. Forward, backward. Make sure hips are wide enough so that we don't get all wobbly. If you're super narrow, this is gonna start to happen. So be about hip width distance. When you step forward, you're actually stepping slightly to the outside as well. Keeping our posture nice and tall. Same thing on the way back. Stepping forward, stepping back. Good, switch legs. Forward, back, and if you're feeling better, you can do this one nice and quick as well, but focus on the technique so don't go so fast that we start getting wobbly knees, because that's when you can get injured, okay? Core is in, abs are tight, keeping our posture nice and upright on each lunge. Want to make sure that we're not dropping forward through the hips, because this can happen a lot on our lunges, where we drop in the hip, core tight, keep engaged, Chest is high, keep that posture nice and straight. Then we're actually working the muscles we want to be working. Good job. <laughs> Fantastic. Next one. We're going to 
gonna start with a left uppercut. It's gonna be left uppercut, cross, left hook, right kick. All about rotation on this round, guys. Hips are wide. I don't want you to be narrow. You're not gonna be able to do this one properly. So hips should be forward. I'm gonna rotate into an uppercut, come back for a cross, rotate into a left hook, and then flick out that right kick, okay? Uppercut, cross, hook, kick. Uppercut, cross, hook, kick. Make sure after the kick you set yourself so that you're coming into this from a strong position. I don't want to see this where you just kind of come into it and you're already off balance because your punches are going to suck. So nice balance position, uppercut, cross, hook, nice kick, finish, in position. Up, cross, hook, kick. If you're feeling better, you want some more speed and power, that's great. You can speed this one up too. Everything's nice and short and compact on this one, okay? Up, cross, hook, kick. Up, cross, hook, kick. Good job. Up, cross, hook, kick. Up, cross, hook, kick. Nice. Up, cross, hook, kick. Remember, always finish your combo if you're halfway through, okay? Next one that we're gonna do, it's gonna be a plank with a shoulder tap. Big thing on this one is you wanna stay braced in your core and not rotating. If it's too hard, then you can just do a plank, okay? But otherwise, plank position, gonna come up, tap the alternating shoulder. And again, if you need to modify this, plank on your hands or on your elbows, it's totally fine. Big thing I want you to watch for is when we bring one side up, I wanna make sure that you don't shift everything to the opposite hip, okay? For balance, think. Hips are gonna be like a table. We wanna keep them nice and straight, okay? So from this position here, when I lift one hand up, I should stay as straight as possible. So I'm balanced when I come up and touch the shoulder. Same idea here. Everything's nice and balanced. Come up and touch the shoulder. The thing that you'll find starts happening is this, where we shift our weight away to this side that takes tension off of our core. So don't do that. So even if you need to drop to your knees for this one so that you can stay balanced, I'd rather have you do that because you're going to get a better core workout as opposed to just kind of shifting the hips and going through the motion. Okay? So this one's very important not to just go through the motion, really focus on the technique. Okay, speed round. Should be jab, right kick, cross, left kick. Punch, kick, punch, kick. A little bit simpler, so fast hands, fast kicks, okay? Jab, kick, cross, kick. Jab, kick, cross, kick. Really make sure we get those punches all the way out. Big focus here, it's fast on the way out, turn it over, and then try to rip it back just as fast. Because that's where you're really gonna get that great workout and start to build some explosiveness with your punches, okay? Fast jab, kick, fast cross, kick. Especially on that cross, rotate it all the way out. I should be up on my toe, right hip should be actually past my left hip. Hands turned all the way over and on the way back. Really come from the lat. Pull it back with speed, okay? Fast jab, kick, cross, kick. Fast, kick, cross, kick. Fast in, fast out. Yeah, fast, 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 fast. All speed, all power on this one. Good job. Almost there. Good job. <laughs> and like always, finish your combo. If you're halfway through, make sure you finish. We're gonna do a narrow, Wide push up, narrow, wide push up. Knees or toes is totally fine. Go based on your level. We're gonna start now for a tricep push up, come wide for a chest push up, tricep push up, chest push up. So again, on your hands is fine. I'm on my knuckles because I got a bad wrist. Tricep push up, then I'm wide for your chest push up, narrow for triceps. Wide for chest. Narrow, triceps, wide, chest. Think when you go wide, don't stay stationary with your weight forward and just have this arm out here. Shift so that that's your new point of reference. So think that my knees or my toes are gonna be a pivot point for when I rotate. I'm gonna adjust so that my body is in the center of my hands as opposed to one arm being way out here, it's gonna put a lot of tension into that shoulder and I don't want you to get injured, okay? So conversely, if you're doing this one on your toes, same idea, tricep, <laughs> wide, chest, wide. 
Just go based on your level, guys. All right, next one. All hooks, all uppercuts. So it's gonna be left hook, right hook, left uppercut, right uppercut. Chest is probably gonna be a little bit sore, a little bit tired after those push-ups, so just do the best you can with it. But think hooks, uppercuts. Ideally on this one, I want a nice steady rhythm. So we wanna to try to keep a pace up for the whole minute. Using a little bit of steps with your foot can help. So think a little bit of rocking motion, of stepping on the left and right as I throw my hooks and uppercuts and turn in. And if you wanna move with this one, that's totally okay. But think we're keeping our nice tight base here and it's all about this motion of shifting my shoulders forward and turning my core. And that's where my punches are gonna come from, right? So if everything comes from proper position, I actually don't need a lot of power from my arms because it's all coming from this twist with my core and my legs and then the hands are just an extension from that. So you hear me say all the time, when you throw your uppercuts, I still want you rotating your hips in. It should be just like the motion on the hook. Exact same thing, okay? Next one, guys, we're gonna do a lateral lunge. Stepping wide, dropping deep into that outside leg. Stepping narrow, wide, deep into that outside leg. Big thing on this one, when your posture goes, I see it all the time. People come forward, chest to the floor. I don't want that. I want you to stay upright. Keep the back on a 45 degree angle, just like when we're doing our squats, okay? Think as far as knee positioning goes, my foot is gonna be forward. My knee is dropping out in line with my toe and then coming forward as well. So when I do this, I don't want my knee dragging to the outside because that's gonna put a lot of torque. I want my knee out in line with my toe and then coming forward almost like I'm dropping into a squat, okay? Same thing when I do the other leg. This leg comes wide, that knee is gonna line up with the toe as I drop. So think I'm stepping out, my hips are actually gonna start to drop back when I come into this, not to the side. So my hips are dropping back into a squat. You're gonna start to open up through the groin on this one, which is what we want. It's gonna help us when we come into our kicks for a little bit more flexibility. So, double kicks, guys. We're gonna do high and low. So if it can be head, body, head, leg, body, leg, slightly above leg, leg, just go based on your flexibility level. We're in position, hands are up, we're gonna kick, 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 kick. And if you need to do the little shuffle step in between your kicks for posture and balance, that's okay. But what I want you to try to work towards is just one step, tap and go. So think, kick, tap, go. Tap, go, tap, go. So I wanna to get to the point where I can be balanced enough that I can just fire one kick from wherever I want. Biggest way to do that is don't let yourself get narrow. We see this all the time where you get into kind of a karate stance. You want your, just like you're doing a squat, with your right foot back so that I'm in balance. I can turn in on my hips. High, low, high, body, high, leg, body, leg, high, low, high, low. But always in that wide position so you always have room to turn in on the hips. So especially if you're hitting heavy bag on this one, same idea, you really wanna be able to turn the hips over. That can't happen, especially on the right side, when you're in this really narrow position here, okay? Next one is just gonna be a pure shoulder burnout. So it's actually gonna be all punches on an above angle. So basically think top of your head is where I want you to be punching to, and it's just gonna be non-stop. Non-stop hands, up to the top of the head. We're gonna get those shoulders moving. I find a little rocking back and forth in your legs helps, as opposed to just being stationary here. So you wanna get your body involved as well, okay guys? But this one's non-stop, non-stop hands. Really make sure all the way out, all the way in. So let's just not keep them super short here, but let's just not keep them out here doing this. I don't just want elbows in front. Full extension on your punches, okay guys? Focus on your breathing, full extension. All the way in, all the way out. Keep that fast pace. Shoulders should start burning nicely. Good job. You got it, you got it. Keep pushing, keep pushing. If you need to move around with it, move around with it. But remember, turn those hands all the way over. If you need to slow it down a little bit, slow it down a little bit, but 
a full extension on that one, okay guys? All right, we're gonna start dropping down with some body shots. Jab, cross, drop down, left hook to the body, come back with a right kick. Big thing when we throw that body hook is I don't wanna lean over here and throw it down nice and low. Just like I'm throwing one up top, same idea, my body just drops down so my legs bring me into position to throw my hook. Jab, cross, left hook, right kick. Jab, cross, left hook, right kick. So this is actually a fantastic combination because my jab, cross are gonna bring my opponent's guard up, which exposes the liver shot on the left hook. That's gonna bring that elbow down and there's a big opening for either the leg or the body on my right kick. So hands come up, capitalize on the body shot, come back on an opening on the right kick. Jab, cross, body shot, boom. Jab, cross, body shot, boom. So everything that we're doing is always dual purpose. We get a fantastic workout, but it's also technically applicable to a kickboxing environment. So if you ever, you know, got to an altercation, you know that what you're doing is legitimate. It's not typo, it's not just about getting a sweat. We're also learning how to do our kick te kickboxing techniques properly, okay? Next one is gonna be a runner's lunge. So dropping down into this position here, like we're gonna do a uh, start and a race. We're gonna jump and switch legs. If you can't do the jump and you find it a little bit too difficult, just step instead. So if I need to do that, I'm gonna step back and step forward. But really think when you step forward, if my arms are here, if I can drive my knee past where my arms are, that's what I want. I want my knee to go as far forward as possible. It's really gonna get a lot of glute activation because of that, okay? So think I'm here, boom, boom. So if you see my knee coming past my arm, that's great. A lot of it's gonna be based on flexibility, so if you can't get all the way up there, that's okay, get as far as you can. And this one is also dual purpose. We're really helping with your cardio. You're gonna find it's gonna jack that heart rate up nice and quick. Try to keep your posture as straight as you can, so try not to let yourself hunch over. Stay nice and straight through your posture as you drive those legs. But try to really be explosive. <laughs> nice fast switches, okay? A little bit of head movement, guys. We're gonna work on our slips. Jab, cross, slip, cross, left hook, flip, left kick. A little bit more complicated, do the best you can. If it looks weird, it's okay because nobody else is watching, right? It's just me and you, and I can't see you. Jab, cross, slip, cross, left hook, slip, left kick. And if you've done the other workouts, you should have worked on your slips by now. Remember, I'm in position, just like a punch is coming from my head. I'm trying to move out of the way. It doesn't need to be a big movement. Three inches is more than enough to get out of the way of that punch, okay? Jab, cross, slip, cross, hook, slip, kick. Also remember, the slip sets up what we're coming back with. This helps me load up a cross. This helps me load up a left kick. So the punch after the slip, or the kick after the slip, should actually feel a little bit easier because of that loading. It's like coiling a spring. So not only are we being defensive, we're actually loading up for more of a power shot afterwards, and there's gonna be an opening there. <coughs> Great job guys. All right, next one is we're going to do leg extensions. So, or leg rows. Back on your hands, feet in nice and tight, extending out, coming back. Extending out, coming back. If you find this one a little bit too challenging, our modification is gonna be one leg at a time, but I want you to focus on leaning back as well, so we can start to build that core strength. And kind of in between version, is gonna be with the short leg, so we're not extending out as far. One thing that's really common on this one is to feel your hip flexors. So kind of the top where your hip meets your quad. If you're feeling that a lot, think about using your core more by squeezing it. So like just as if I was going to get punched, the way that I would squeeze my abs, I want to try to maintain that squeeze as I extend out, okay? When you relax and just let everything else take over, that's when a lot of times your hip flexors are going to kick in. So just think about keeping my abs squeezed and engaged. And I should really isolate that burn. Slow it down if you need to, because technique is always king, okay guys? We want to do everything with as flawless technique as possible. Yeah. Yeah, drive it out. Drive it out. Fantastic. 
Another great workout, guys. I'm gonna give you that fist bump. And I'm gonna see you tomorrow.